Welcome class to Cornell Notes. And as you can see, metacognition beats cognition every time. Our objective here is to use effective strategies to take notes during a lecture. And why? Why do we have to use effective strategies to take notes during a lecture? Well, I'll tell you why. Why is because Cornell Notes among many other types of notes, foster what is known as metacognition. Metacognition means literally going beyond knowing, beyond knowing, knowing what one knows and what one doesn't know, fostering an ability to monitor levels of understanding and predict how well one will do on a particular task. And I like this quote, no more there is there an excuse for letting knowledge accumulate in isolated puddles within students' minds. And I think that's what we do oftentimes, certainly when you get to the college level. Uh, we are letting knowledge accumulate in isolated puddles within students' minds. You're actually going to different places, maybe all around campus possibly, and getting these isolated bits of knowledge. What we found out about that is, is that those isolated puddles evaporate quite easily and if it's it's only if you find ways of bringing those ideas together and and making connections forging connections summarizing doing certain other things all of which come under that heading of metacognition uh, does it ever really stick and does it ever really become meaningful for the person learning it and one of the places where I encountered this uh, was my organic chemistry professor, Professor Carita. And uh, a lot of people really love this guy. I think he's amazing, and, and indeed he is. Uh, he can draw organic molecules with both hands, and I may have referenced him before. But when I would go to his lecture, I was barely even doing cognition, let alone metacognition. I was taking notes as quickly as I could and I was just trying to keep up as, as much as I could with his lectures because, like I said, he could draw organic molecules with both hands. And what I really needed was an additional step, something after the fact that would allow me to go back into that lecture and say, what did I just learn? What are the concepts that I just uh, found out about? And how can I relate that to what I already know? And I never gave myself that opportunity. I want to give you a little research here is that this group of people uh, described identifying similarities and differences, in other words, comparing and contrasting basic to all learning. Students who spent some time comparing and contrasting with prior knowledge witnessed a 45 percentile gain in their achievement, the highest increase of the nine strategies research. So this group of people went, researched a number of different strategies, metacognitive strategies in many cases. And they found out that connecting, comparing and contrasting, identifying similarities and differences between what you just learned and prior knowledge, uh, they witnessed the largest gain in their achievement. Cornell Notes allows you to have that step in the process. This group also identified summarizing and note-taking as second only to identifying similarities and differences in its ability to positively affect student achievement. Students who used summarizing strategies witnessed a 34 percentile gain in their achievement, the second highest increase of the nine strategies researched. And so this is an, another thing that Cornell Notes allows you to do. One of the disservices that we've done for you in high school is that a lot of times we're providing these as activities for you to do after you've read something, after you've gotten a little instructional input. We do a lot of this for you. We set these up for you. When you go to the college level, no one is going to be setting these activities up for you. You are going to have to set them up yourself. And you probably don't want to do a whole ton of different things although you can come up with a couple different strategies, Cornell Notes is one strategy that will have you be doing the metacognitive type thinking that you need to do in order to have material really make sense to you and be meaningful to you. Okay, so let's go over to the Cornell Note-taking system 
And let's talk about what are the different aspects of it. And the first aspect is you start over here. First of all, you have your Cornell notes. You can set these up yourself on a piece of loose leaf paper if you don't happen to have a template with you. First step is to record. And what you do here is, during the lecture, use the note-taking column to record the lecture using telegraphic sentences. So you're starting over on the right-hand side of the page, and you are recording this. Uh, telegraphic sentences is kind of a reference to the type of writing that happens in telegrams. If you remember telegrams, we don't use them much anymore. But uh, they were a way of communicating across the country. You would. Um, they would do Morse code and they would send a short message because you paid by the word, I believe, maybe by the letter. And so you wanted these to be as short as possible. And so you would use abbreviations, you would use sentence fragments, uh, you would use acronyms rather than writing out all the words. That's very important. Uh, lecturers do not slow down for you. Uh, oftentimes in high school you can get them to slow down a little bit, but once you get to the college level, they are not going to slow down, so you have to get good at taking telegraphic sentences. The next step is questions. As soon after class as possible, formulate questions based on the notes in the right-hand column. Writing question helps clarify meanings, reveal relationships, establish continuity, and strengthen memory. Also, the question, uh, writing of questions set up, sets up a perfect stage for exam studying later. And that happens over in this area, so over on the left side. These questions should be directly based, basically they should be prompting you to say whatever the material is over on that right side. And you may already figure this out. You can divide this right down the middle, you can fold this over, and you can use those questions to study the material. And that's exactly what you do next. The next step is to recite. So cover the note-taking column with a sheet of paper. Then looking at the questions or cue columns only, uh, say aloud in your own words the answers to those questions, the facts indicated by the cue words. So that would be over on the right side. You're not looking at the right side. Your questions should provide you with enough of a prompt or as, as many prompts as you need to uh, say back the information that's over on that right side. Moving down a little bit further, reflect. Reflect on the material by asking yourself questions. For example, what's the significance of these facts? What principle are they based on? How can I apply them? How do they fit in with what I already know? What's beyond them? And where you do that is down at the bottom here, okay, in this place, it's called summary. I don't like summary that much uh, because one of the reasons being that um, I prefer this question. How do they fit in with what I already know? That's you connecting to prior knowledge. Um, when you're doing the questions up here, you're really summarizing it. You're boiling them down into questions. Down at the bottom, I think it's good to provide yourself with an opportunity to compare and contrast. How do they fit in with what I already know? Okay, and then finally, last step is to review. And what do you do there? You spend at least 10 minutes every week reviewing all your previous notes. If you do, you will retain a great deal for current use as well as for the exam. Okay, I want to show you one that was done. So this was a lecture that was done on cinematic techniques. And as you can see over here on uh, the right side, there is uh, information from the lecture. Okay, a lot of information from the lecture. And you can see visual methods, lighting, moving down, lots of lighting type stuff. Then we get into camera angles. Okay, so this person is taking notes as quickly as they can as the lecture is going. Later that night or the next day, they come back as soon as possible and they come up with questions, questions that 
prompt her to basically recite the information that's over on that right side. And you notice that they're frequent, okay? They're not, and they're not just random questions. They are questions that could be used for studying. And not only that, they can be used for studying pretty much close to 100% of the material that was given in the lecture. Okay, so you want to have your questions be frequent enough that it, they'll be a useful study tool. Uh, and you shouldn't let many concepts go by without having a question for them because you don't want to be reciting the entire lecture or reciting large amounts of the lecture because you have a question like, what are lighting techniques? And then you're going to be reciting, you know, a couple paragraphs worth of information. You want it to be a little bit more frequent than that. So this does that. Now, once she gets done with that, she goes on to the bottom part, which is a conclusion. She says, cinematic techniques play a bigger role in movies than I ever would have thought. Everybody just thinks movies are about the actors, and yes, they play a big role, but cinematic techniques really set a mood example jaws. Now, that's not terribly um, involved or thorough, but you can see there are some connections being made there. I, I would push you to be even a little bit more thorough than that and, and definitely go outside the box if necessary. Here's the check brick that I will use uh, to see whether or not you are doing these things. First of all, record uses telegraphic sentences to record a large percentage of the lecture. So with a lot of lecturers, that's not just what's on the slide. The slide is just the beginning. The slide is, is going to remind them the main points, and then they're going to elaborate on those points. You should get all that information, or as much of it as possible. Question, that's the second stage, formulates frequent appropriate questions and or cues, prompting all or almost all of the notes in the right-hand column. And you can see she did very frequent, and, and that's good. Uh, you may do less than that, slightly less than that, but you don't want to have it be too infrequent because then you're going to have to give back large portion, portions of the lecture. Finally, down at the bottom, you reflect deeply on the material by answering one or more of the following questions. What's the significance of these facts? How can I apply them? So personally, how do they relate to what I already know? I like that one in particular because it has you doing that comparison and contrast with prior knowledge and what's beyond them. So that kind of gives you a summary of what I'm looking for on this Cornell, Cornell Notes assignment. Um, so cue up the lecture and give it a good listen.